Ooh. That was banging. I've been taking photos throughout my whole life, but I've never sold my photos via a print store. There was one time when I had my prints available in a cafe in my hometown in Western Supermare, next door to where I worked in a milkshake shop. But other than that, I've never really sold my photos to scale, which is quite interesting because my background is in design and I am deeply connected into print. Everything from big exhibition graphics down to small editorial pamphlets, designs, you name it, I've kind of done a lot of design about it. So I've been running this channel for about eight years or so, and my intention has always been to inspire people to travel and be creative. This is by far gonna be the most tangible, physical way that you can actually connect directly and help support the channel and future growth of things. So as you'll probably know, I pride myself on premium quality. I don't do anything by half measures. I put my heart and soul into everything for efficiency and consistency and premium quality. So let's jump back to the beginning of setting up my print store. First test print, donut bend. <laughs> For a minute, I couldn't even remember what print we actually chose. But that looks pretty great. Fuji map or something this was printed on. So the biggest hurdle for, quite honestly, years has been just deciding what images am I going to print. The reality is, when it came down to it, I just kind of chose an image in my head that was most memorable to me and went and started the process. Funnily enough, that's not even an image that's in the print store. But it just shows that that initial hurdle turned out to not really be the big hurdle to things. From the very beginning, I had an immediate choice. Do I print things myself or do I go with a professional printers? I decided I'd go through a professional printers. It saves all the headaches, extra wasted cost of tests and everything. And I can work with a professional who is dedicated to doing exactly what they do, print photos. Plus, I've always enjoyed working with printers. There's just something about talking with someone who's a craftsman in what they're doing and just getting to understand that level of detail and quality. I just connect with it. So I am thinking of putting together a video going through my whole workflow of editing from digital into print and calibrating and everything combined to get the best quality achievable. That's gonna be way too in depth for this video. This is all about the overarching print experience. So I started off with just a single image and sent it to a couple of different printers to get some different experiences coming back. Sample set number three. I've made some adjustments to the prints and I'm very keen to see this. Oh, that looks banging. <gasps> that looks so good. It's all in the paper. Wow. I love the blue on that paper though. I love the sharpness to it. That is crisp. Yeah, that's a nice photo. It's got layers and all sorts. And yeah, the blue in it and... The bridge looks really sharp. Very, very happy with that. I want that on the wall. We can compare this with the other print companies. Okay, so it's much better than the first one. Very, very similar to the second one. Now I can't stress this enough. When it comes to printed work, everything is in the paper. So when sending your photos to print, you can of course just send an image to print and just have that come back to you. But there are so many different options available. There's different printing methods. There's different paper stock that you can use. There's even just different sizes that give a different emotional response to those prints. And of course, I've always wanted to have great quality prints, but also ones that just feel very tactile, feel like they're, they're something more than just a printed photo, a piece of art. And so I honestly can't stress it enough how important it is to work directly with a printing company. Building a relationship with them is invaluable. Probably the biggest hurdle and headache has been sizing the images. How big or how small, how metric or how imperial do I want my prints to be? Keeping things kind of simple, but also accessible, I want to go for the idea of three sizes, a small, a standard, and a super size. The only set decision I knew is that I didn't want to do A sizes. In my opinion, A sizes such as A4, A3, A2, they're document sizes. They're paper for corporate written work. They're for documents, they're for letters. They're not for artwork. 
Now, that's definitely my opinion on things, but I feel very strongly about this. These are the things that we care about. These are the details. You see, with A sizes, we see them everywhere. And we're so accustomed to knowing what an A3 piece of paper feels like, for example. When it's handed to us, it just feels like any other A3 piece of paper. Our brain doesn't make any connection to that. But when you hold something that is a different aspect ratio, you just notice it, you feel it, you connect with it so much more, it just breaks the mold on what you're used to seeing when you hold that paper. And that's what I think is incredibly important about printed work is making you stop and look at it and pay attention to it. So if A sizes were the easy option to get rid of, the difficult decision was choosing the aspect ratio for the prints. Part of the testing process for these prints is seeing how they look and fit in fairly standard frames. So there's only one place that I think is standard across the whole world when it comes to buying furniture and home decorations and things, and that is Ikea. So we went to Ikea and bought a ton of frames. They're super affordable. Uh, some of them are pretty good quality, some of them are really crap. Just want to see how, how the prints look in them. You're probably aware of aspect ratios such as 3x2, 4x3, 7x5, all sorts of different options. And there are countless ratios out there. They're not even necessarily scalable from small all the way to large. And so there are slight discrepancies between different sizes. And these were things that I had to decide on. And so to try and keep this as accessible as possible, I want to make sure that the prints were available in frames that were readily available around the world. Yeah, see, I did this one as 16 by 12 mm. inches to see, and this is exactly what I wanted to test, if it fit into 30 by 40. And the answer is no. So this one is the paper at 12 by 16, whereas this one is the photo with extra paper. This is one of the issues that comes up frequently you know, just to kind of prove a point on here. Um, so this frame is made for artwork. So this is a 30 by 40, so a three by four aspect ratio in vertical. So the frame is made for artwork, but the mount that comes with it is made for a document. And this is the thing that just really gripes me. It's that little bit too vertical, or it's that little bit too wide. It's especially noticeable in a, in a landscape shot. Okay, so my first query has been uh, challenged. I wanted to know whether the frame manufacturers call it a 40 by 30 with the intent that it would actually fit uh, in a traditional inches format. And the answer is no, they don't. <laughs> so that's the first thing challenged and uh, understood. So glad about that. So my three sizes that I'm offering, the small, the standard and the super are a 21 by 30, a 30 by 40, and a 50 by 70 centimeters. So once I'd found my paper sizes, I then needed to decide upon my image sizes. Now I knew that I wanted to have a margin around the edge of the paper. It really shows intention on this is what the image is and it's not set by the paper size, but also allows you to feel the quality of the paper. You can just really get that tangible experience from it. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> It feels way it's different. Good. <laughs> it's really good. I'm just struggling with the paper a bit. This is such a weird feeling. I don't know. I've mm. found paper that feels um, feels like soft and like it's not furry, but like it's almost like it's um, you know how paper can feel quite like flat and, and just I don't. I'm used to being able to paper that you write on that's like in a printer that you go take it out. That's yeah. like a reference. And paper just doesn't feel this good. I, I feel like a philistine of paper. <laughs> like I'm getting educated <laughs> on what paper's supposed to be like. You need to go to JF. Um, Smith. G.S. Smith, yeah. Yeah. If you're going to frame these, you could frame them in a frame that's much larger than the print itself, mount it with a piece of mount board, and you've got that overlap area. It's an area where I can sign the print, and it just gives you so much more flexibility. So once I'd got some of the measurements and sizing figured out, I then needed to work out what prints and what paper I was going to be using. So Ellie and myself sat down and went through a whole host of images from over the years of traveling and tried to piece together some that I thought were really signature to the style of photography that's always shown on the channel and what we felt could do well as prints. I then went through, remastered and re-edited a lot of them, sent them off to get various different samples across different paper types in the different sizes. Yeah, very vivid. That's really nice. Mm. Big thing I'm not a fan of is when the print shows the paper brand on the back. But I'm not a fan of the, the glossiness. I think I knew that beforehand, so mm. just confirming it. 
It's quite a little bit smaller. So we tried some C-type printing on some glossy paper from Fujifilm. Try some gicle printing on different types of matte paper and some sort of luster semi-matte paper. And in the end, we decided that the gicle on the Hanamula photo rag was the absolute premium. Hands down, it was just the best experience holding those prints. Just when you feel it and you hold it, the weight of the paper, the softness of the cotton, everything combined, it just feels like nothing else you've ever felt in terms of a photographic print. The absorption you get of the ink blew me away. I honestly didn't expect to get so much depth in the shadows on paper that essentially feels like the type of paper that illustrators and watercolor artists would use. I can't stress enough how thick and heavyweight this paper is, and it just feels good and it looks so good. It's got so much depth to the images, I really love them. In contrast to some of the glossy ones, they just felt a bit floppy. I, I don't know what it is about a glossy, I think it was floppiness, <laughs> but this has like a rigidity <laughs> to it that is really nice. You don't like the flop? <laughs> No. That being said, some of those papers do lend themselves great to some types of print, but for what I'm doing, I really liked the matte paper. Likewise, I think you just get such an emotional response to it. When you open that packet and you see it and hold it for the first time, you can tell immediately that this is a good quality print. It is the more expensive option, but I think it's definitely worth it. So alongside working with the prints in physical form, my big summer project has been digitally building and coding my new online store. I just always, always work better. I get into a state of flow late at night, as we can see, 311. There's a lot to it. Uh, I knew there'd be a lot to it. Still looks very structural at the moment, um, but I've got the vision of uh, where it's going. For those of you who code, you'll know that it's both amazingly rewarding and intensely frustrating at times. It's been interesting developing with Shopify. There's like, there's been a few hurdles to it. I don't like it. And you know what? I am really loving the flexibility of how Shopify is working in comparison to Selfie. I think it just does a better job of uh, showing the products. Getting close to it, almost finished. I've just put a new order in for more prints as well. Um, so those will be arriving and testing and tweaking. Uh, I can't stress enough how valuable it is to test and tweak. I see far too many creators who just set up a print store, but they never see and experience the prints themselves. They never even handle the products. So I think the store is now in a great place to work as a foundation to work on future products. I still want to get some of that merch ready and I've got plans for some other things as well. It takes a long time, so I always appreciate you waiting for those drops. When it came to choosing my images, I had so many that I could work with, but the truth is when seeing so many and having so much choice, it actually kind of stops you from making a decision. So by limiting the decision down, it makes it a stronger collection. Likewise, the types of images that I wanted to work with, I had to think of them more relatable rather than emotional to me. The chances of other people also wanting that image sometimes is quite slim. This screams Joe Allen to me. It's yeah. really, like it's got a sense of you because it's got like if I think of all the times I've seen you lit up in videos, it's always when you've got some sort of either um, high vantage point over a whole city or some yeah. sort of skyscraper or famous building. And I feel like you love that yeah. for whatever reason. And I just like this like real uniform height and all of it, but it's all about that big stark colour at the top. Yeah, I think I maybe prefer the vertical than the yeah. horizontal. With those buildings. And the road is just kind of cool, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, that's a better picture. Yeah. So this collection is just four images. We've got an image from California, Malaysia, Hong Kong, and of course, Japan. They're available in the three different sizes, the small, standard, and the super size. So these prints are gonna be limited by time available rather than limited edition. For me, ideally, I want these prints to go out flat where possible. Some of the larger prints, especially to further destinations, may not be able to go out flat and they will have to go in a tube. So I've gone through all sorts of different packaging types to get super rigid and sturdy options. And I think I've found what's perfect for me. This is Cologne pack. Uh, technically too big. The one that's inside, I'm allergic to. Far more sturdy. 
could be a good option. Giant box for this. Seriously? Yeah, look at that, that creases immediately. Rigidity. Oof, it's not the one. It's still below 500 grams. Yeah, see, this is fine. Going back to the prints, obviously these are a physical product. There's a lot of logistics involved. There's potentially some of you who may want to buy these from all corners of the globe. And I wanna make sure that I can deliver there. But from the get-go, I knew that I didn't really wanna do drop shipping, which is where you connect with different printers and just have them offload the work. I wanna be able to check over every print that's going out and just make sure that it definitely is the quality that I approve of. It doesn't mean that drop shipping is necessarily bad. It just means that right now, I wanna make sure that I can oversee what's happening with the prints and going through the quality and just handling it. Now, of course that comes with its limitations because it means that I need to be here in London to facilitate those orders and those prints. And so the prints aren't gonna be available all the time, forever. I'm gonna have to do these as limited drops. The cost of shipping can vary wildly around the world and it can actually be quite off-putting at times. And so I've decided for these standard sizes and above, I'll be offering free shipping globally. And for the moment at least, both Ellie and myself will be handling these personally. I'd love to deliver them directly to your door if I could, but that bit, I can't quite be a control freak on. So they're available for the next month only, and that's because we need to be in the country working on these prints to send them out and ship them everywhere. So at the end of that cutoff point, I don't know when the store's gonna be open again for prints. It could be a while. I Honestly, I can't tell you at that point. So if you want to stay up to date with details about the store, then definitely subscribe to my email list and of course, follow me on Instagram. I post a lot on my stories. Go and check out the link in the description. So thank you for all of your support over the years. I really hope you enjoy these prints and they will of course be reinvested back into the channel for future videos. Let me know what you think of them. Um, I'm so excited to get these out. Finally, this has been such a long process.